Hello everyone, Jack here. So this is a video that I am not sure is uh, going to be relevant for any of you, uh, but for those who may be anime fans, uh, it might resonate a bit. I hope uh, because I wasn't sure if this could even be any in any sort of form informative or because the aim here is not to entertain or anything. It was just a couple of thoughts that I had in mind. And I kind of wanted to share it, because today I woke up feeling very psyched about the day. Uh, the sun was shining, everything was great, and just like Ice Cube would say, today was going to be a good day. However, um, it just so happened that this weekend, actually, I managed to watch the new season of Castlevania, uh, where there's this one scene, uh, I can't remember the episode, but one of Carmilla's sisters, like the... the awesome jacked one uh, went out and had to fight during the day these are vampires and uh, she had to wear like a sun armor and absolutely slaughtered some villagers trying to yeah fight against her but the animation of that scene had me just saying one thing the entire time i wish that the studio working on castlevania could animate whatever future project was going to be done for Berserk. And then I got the grim reminder that saying these kind of things tends to jinx up stuff. I'm making this, of course, as you've read in the title, uh, due to the fact that Kentaro Miura, the creator of Critically, and one of, if not, <laughs> the, the, the manga that has, made, that has given me most feels, uh, Berserk, died at the age of 54. Too young. Way too young. This occurred actually on May 6th. His family kept it very hush-hush, which is completely understandable. Um, and they held a, a private funeral. Um, so it was only just released uh, now that he had suffered what I, I believe the article mentioned something that is akin to a heart failure. And that kind of took me aback because we consume media in all of its forms and literature and art to such a degree that we, we kind of end up living vicariously through the, the works of people. Like some are just so synonymous to the, the feelings that we feel feel the emotions that we exude in our daily lives like i can't overcome certain things and not have to play an mj song or something from Jimi hendrix or when i'm riding my bike in the free air and not listen to bloody mf doom who passed away recently as well and we end up forgetting that these people are human their work is going to last, but they, sometimes they feel like distant friends that you may never have met them. Um, never are going to meet them, but they feel so, so close <laughs> somehow. Like, for example, let me bring a, 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 something a bit close. Like, you have um, Togashi the creator of Hunter x Hunter. If Ichiro Oda right now was not upheld as like the national treasure of Japan, the creator of One Piece, I'll definitely put Togashi as one of the best. He has created a world that is so deeply rooted, uh, that is so systematically well made, that it is a bit unfortunate that of course it takes so long for him to create chapters, which is kind of the similar situation that Berserk had. Like the long wait felt like you going into hibernation and suddenly seeing the sunlight after a long winter. But every single time that you saw this, it was exactly like this, like meeting that one friend that you hadn't seen in a while and rejoicing over reading a chapter of his or talking to him because they are, at the end of the day, these works are extensions of their will, their, their views on life and you get to share it with them. They have been, Berserk especially, have been so deeply influential in so many things. One of my favorite games, Dark Souls, and, and 
also manga that I like to read as well as watching its anime adaptation, Claymore, just to name a few. And what's even greater is that this was the type of show that made me draw morals in things that I never could have imagined. And at a very young age, like nowadays, I can pick up some sort of literature and always use that as a reference for anything. Like recently, I started rediscovering uh, the Warhammer universe and reading the works of the likes of Dan Abnett, where I sometimes feel like it's bloody biblical because it's so well done. <laughs> and on the other hand, whenever I need to talk about like familial issues or even when it comes to religion, I will turn to something of like C.S. Lewis, the guy who wrote Narnia. He has this very nice book called, uh, oh man, if I could remember that, uh, screw, screw Tape something. I put the name somewhere around here. And when it comes to this, I was, I used to, to watch Berserk and get traumatized by the, the scene with Casca, that that was just a simple aspect of it. I could not grasp that the medium of anime that I was watching could create something so graphic, but there was an intent behind it. Because Guts is one of the very few characters, although he's known as like the universal Chad, was way more than that. For a character that was depicted as being so very brutish and had, he's a man of very little words, express so much while doing very little, except of course for the action scenes. Guts was the personification of I am my scars. Going forth and overcoming every single situation. Like it felt like yesterday <laughs> to get to, to the time frame on which the chapters were released that he had finally regained his love and she had regained some sort of sanity back. And his journey had come to an end. And there's like this bloody panel that I kept on having throughout the day. That's kind of uh, where he meets with the Skull Knight who kind of goes like, Hey, this uh, you've reached the end of your journey. And I'm like, oh no, this is going to stick with me for the rest of the week, isn't it? I learn so much in terms of like psychology, human behavior. I know this was this may not be straight up the intent but what tends up happening is that we all have certain like a, a deeply personal understanding of the work that we, we read and as I said we live vicariously through them so this understanding of hum, humanity like of overcoming what some people would call destiny through reading Berserk. And all that I can truly say is that I am grateful for Mura's work and wherever he may be, that he rests in peace. I wish his family the best and uh, thanks again so much for what you've done. Like, <laughs> there, there are like Final Fantasy players right now who are still, to this hour, Standing there with the Belm as Belmont Knights, like wearing the massive claymores, posing there uh, as some ceremonial gratitude. This is just to show for how much, uh, how influential his work has been. And uh, yeah, that's really all that I had to say. So if any of you have. Uh, have experienced anything with the the manga or dare I say the anime of Berserk let me know in the comment section I'd like to to read any anything that you have to say about it so with that said I wish you a wonderful evening and uh, I see you guys next time